Hello, Keith here. In this short video I'm going to look at AnnoSim, which is one of the primer routines for testing for significant differences among groups. And before I define that situation in more detail, let me just briefly introduce the situation I'm working with. So for a longer description of this, go to the first video in the series, but I'm looking at a simulated environment where there's a marine seafloor floating from 25 meters to 75 meters deep with sandier sediments to the north, muddier sediments to the south and three sources of pollution which are these dots here with pollution predominantly flowing downstream downhill to the south and for samples that are taken, I get measurements of four environmental variables, depth, sediment, nutrients and hydrocarbons, and abundances of a range of taxa, which are labelled crustaceans, mollusks and worms in this data sheet here. Now, if I'm looking at this design in terms of factors, strictly speaking, it's three factors. I've got north versus south samples. I've got samples to this side of the map, to the west of the map, versus samples to the east of the map, and then I've got samples close to the source of the pollution and off to the side of the pollution. For the purposes of this video and some of the previous videos in the series, I'm just looking at this as a two-factor system north versus south and then with the other uh, locations just specified as different locations. So I'm separating north and south and then I'm just labeling these as four different locations, leaving out one factor just to simplify the situation. Okay, I've already imported the environmental and biological data into Primer in order to reduce the importance of the abundant taxa so that the less abundant taxa have more of a role to play in the patterns that we see, I've taken the square roots of the abundances and then done the Bray-Curtis similarity calculation. And then if we do an MDS on that we get a diagram or a ordination plot that looks like this. Now in here certainly looks as if there's some significant differences among locations, perhaps not um, between north and south. And Anasim was one of the first methods developed to test for the significance of such differences and it's based on calculations from the resemblance matrix but it doesn't use the raw values, it uses the ranks of those values. So every value in here is converted to a rank from the smallest value from the smallest percent similarity up to the largest and then all the subsequent calculations are done on the ranked values. In other words, we lose information that comes from the actual magnitude of the differences. I'll come back to that a little later on. Now actually running the AnnoSim is simple if I have the factors already set up. So over here in the biological worksheet, I've got a blank column and then two columns which have the codes for the factors and in this worksheet the samples are the rows. Okay, back to Primer. So it's simply analyze AnnoSim and then specify what type of design. So to start with I'll just treat this as a one factor design where I just want to compare the zones. So I'll specify the zone here and I could include or exclude different levels. There's only two levels so it doesn't make much sense 
fiddling with that particular option. And plot the histogram here, I usually turn that off, but I'll leave it on for this demonstration. OK, go. Now, what AnnoSim does is it calculates a statistic called R. And R is scaled to range from minus 1 to plus 1. If the value calculated is plus 1, then there is perfect separation among the groups. If I go back to the MDS for a moment, there is fairly good separation among the groups here, but if we get and look into the samples over the side here, we'll see that the samples are mixed up, so that not all of them are separating out. If each group was clearly distinct from the others, then the R value would be 1 or close to it. Significance is calculated by randomly shuffling the labels around. So go back to the MDS here. The north and south labels will be randomly shuffled or permutated around and a new R value calculated. So the histogram here shows the distribution of the randomized or permutated R values and the dotted line shows the value calculated for the samples with their correct labels. I'll go back here. Here's the text results. Uh, first of all, we've got a summary up there, and then if we scroll down here, the gl global test statistics point 0.14, which is indicating not much separation of the north and south groupings. There's a fair amount of mixing up there, but the test statistic is significant. It is point. It is 1.7 percent, which is less than the usual 5 percent level. What about if I run AnnoSim on, not zone, but location? Here, I can choose to include or exclude particular groups. OK, again, now you can see what's happening. The values up here, 0.38, it's much greater than all the randomised values. And if we go to the text result, test results, and scroll down, 0.379, so that's modest. Uh, significance level has dropped to 0.1%, so totally significant. And now because we've got more than two groups, there are also pairwise tests in here. So west and far west are different. West and east are not. West and far east, far east and far west, and east and far east are different. But far west and far east are not different. Note there is a negative number there which indicates that um, it's an unusual situation where the samples are actually more interspersed than you would expect. So that's Anasim. Its strengths are that it's just working on the ranks. So the fact that there's an outlier over here which might disturb the results of other tests, such as Permanova, is not an issue. It's that distance in there is not really going to come into account once we convert things to a rank. That will just be the furthest away from all the other samples. So that's the strength of the situation. It's also relatively easy to understand what's being done and to interpret. In the case of tests for location, all these labels on here are just being randomly shuffled around and a new R value calculated. If we go and look at the two-factor NSM, we'll start to see some of the limitations. Now, I've been describing this as a two-way design, whereas strictly it should really be a three-way. But if we're Looking at it as a two-factor, it's a two-factor with replicates because there's replicate samples for each location and for north versus south. Again, I've got the same options down here, but I'm just going to leave everything alone and run it. Whoops, choose different factors for A and B. Well, yes, that would be a good idea. There we go. This time we'll take two graphs, one for the zone test 
and one for the location. Now the location, the line has crept up even further, it's up to nearly 0.7 because this test is now taking into account the fact that there are two factors in here and the zone test has crept up too. Now the line is up above 0.8 so the two one-way ANA sims um, were a little misleading. We go to the test here, scroll down. Uh, the test statistic for location, uh, sorry for zones so it's testing between zones, north and south, 0.8, and the significance of that is 0.1%. Now, in fact, for both of these, the test statistic significance is 0.1%, simply because we ran 999 permutations, and the calculated test statistic for the real data was greater than all of those 99 permutations. If I actually go and run it again, but increase the number of permutations, and back to the results, you'll see that the significance level um, drops even further. So it's gone down to 0.01% for locations, because again, none of the permutated or randomised values was greater than the value for the real samples. Um, it's not quite as strong for the north-south comparison. Um, again, because we've got four groups or four levels in the location factor, we've got the pairwise tests and they give the same results as we saw earlier. Now, what is the main limitation here? The main limitation is that AnnoSim is unable to test for the interaction in the two-factor design. In a crossed two-factor design as I have here, where all locations are present both north and south, there is a theoretical possibility of an interactive effect. And there may be some evidence for that in the graph here, in that the northeast are further away from the other samples than in the other grouping. So interactive effect basically says that something complicated is going on, but Anasim is unable to test for that. It can only test for the two main effects. Per manover, by contrast, and I've done the per manover. Whoops, I want the per manover for the two factor. The per manover is able to test for the location effect. Now, per manover actually gives quite similar results for the zone and location tests. The p value is 0 0.001, just as we saw for Anasim, but importantly, the per manover is able to test for the interactive effect and it's throwing up a interactive effect which is just as significant as the two main effects and that is indicating that the locations are not showing the same results in the north and the south zone or now north and south region and there's a very good reason for that the pollution is coming from this spot here and this spot here so it's going to be affecting those two areas greatly and these areas out to the side hardly at all but as the pollution spreads its effect is going to drop off and so the difference as we go across the map in the north is going to be f much greater than as we go across the map down here towards the south so that we modest effects of pollution here, here, slight effects there, there, strong effects here and here, a little effect there and there. So in this situation we would expect an interactive an interactive effect. The permanover picks that up. It is evident in the graph. But 
the anasim is unable to test for that, even though it does lead to correct conclusions about zone and location. On the other hand, the anasim has the advantage that it is not going to be affected by outliers like this. In contrast, differences in dispersion within the groups can affect the outcome of per manoeuvre. So in, if I was concerned about that here, I might actually exclude this particular sample point when I was doing further analysis. I hope that illustrates the use of one and two factor anasim and also describes some of the differences and similarities of anasim and permanova.